Hi there, I'm Mrs McTaggart and I'm going to work through the paper one of the Practice B, Practice Papers available from the National 5 Maths website. So question one is a board mass question. Board mass, you should remember that we do the multiply bit first. So the real sum is 7.18. Take away 6.3 if I've multiplied that by 3. Please, always handy to do a sum for these ones rather than try to do it mentally because that's where mistakes are made. So we end up with 8 minus nothing is 8. Borrow from there, 11 take away 3 is 8 and 6 take away 6 is 0. So our answer there is 0 0.88 for the first one. For question 2, we have a divide by a fraction. So to divide fractions, they must be top heavy first of all. So I'm going to change that 1 and 1 eighth into a top heavy fraction. So you do 8 times 1 add 1 all over 8 for the to make that a, an improper fraction, which gives you 9 over 8 divided by 3 quarters. And the rule for dividing by fractions is you keep it, keep the first one, change the sign to a times and flip the third one. So keep it, change it, flip it is the motto I use. Then from there you can either do some cross cancellation diagonally or you can just do top times top bottom times bottom. I'll show you both ways. If I can look at the 9 and the 3 diagonally, divide them both by 3 gives you 3 and 1. Diagonally the other way, they both divide by 4, so that gives you 1 and that gives you 2. And then if you look at my new numbers, I've got 3 times 1 on the top, 2 times 1 on the bottom, which is 2. And you can leave your answer as 3 over 2. If you want to, you could write that as 1 and 1 half, but I definitely think you're safer leaving it as 3 over 2. I did say there was an alternative, so if you don't like the cross-cancelling method, you could have just gone straight from here and done 9 times 4 was 36, 8 times 3 was 24, and then hopefully spot that that was the 12 times table and somehow get down to 3 over 2 as well that way. Okay. Our third question is an inequality. Um, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to expand that bracket on the right-hand side. So we're going to have 5 take away x is greater than 2x plus 2. Now, you can go two ways here. We can either bring all the letters to the left or we can take all the letters to the right. Personally, I prefer to take them to the right. But I'll show you both ways. So if I was going to bring all the numbers to the left, I would have positive 2 coming over and becoming 5 take away 2. And on the right, I would have 2x... And then the negative x becomes plus x. That leaves me with 3 is greater than 3x. Three, 3 into 3 goes once, so you have 1 is greater than x. And then you can rewrite that as the other way around. And remember, at the moment, the arrow is pointing to the x, so I keep the arrow pointing to the x. Okay, so it gives me x is less than 1. If I do the other method where we um, keep our letters left and numbers right, Using the numbers, you'd have five, um, sorry, you would have negative x take away 2x on this side is greater than 2 minus 5 on that side. Tidy that up, you're left with minus 3x is greater than minus 3. 3 into 3 goes once. Minus 3 into minus 3, um, the double negative will cancel, so it just becomes positive 1. But because you have divided by a negative number here, you must flip the arrow. And you'll notice both answers become x is less than 1. Okay, so it depends if you like to keep letters left or numbers right. Personally, I'd like this one here in blue, um, where it just keeps your letters positive and then you don't need to worry about flipping the arrow at all. Question four is functions. You'll notice that it says f of x equals this function here and then suddenly it says f of minus three. So what's happened is x is changing to minus three. So we replace x with minus three. So you've got negative three squared plus five times negative three. Now negative three squared is nine. Five times negative three is minus 15. So you've just got nine take away 15, which is minus six and that's your answer for that one that's all you have to do question five is vectors we want the magnitude of 4u take away 2v so the first thing we have to do is work out 4u take away 2v so 4u take away 2v equals now if we're going to multiply all of this vector by four sorry and then all of this vector by two so the the u vector becomes 12 minus 8 minus 4, take away, and the v, the v vector becomes 4 minus 8, 2. 
Take them away and just watch your signs. 12 take away 4 is 8. Minus 8, minus, minus 8. That becomes a double positive there. So that just gives you 0. And minus 4, minus 2 is minus 6. Now the magnitude is then taking that vector and doing the square root of all your numbers squared. So 8 squared plus 0 squared plus minus 6 squared. Um, six, 8 squared is 64. 0 squared is 0, minus 6 squared is 36, which gives you the square root of 100, which we should all know is 10. So the magnitude of the vector is 10 for your final answer. Right, question 6. We can squeeze this down the bottom here. So question 6 is asking you to factorise first of all. So you've got p squared minus 4q squared. Well, all of these are square terms. p is squared, 4 is a square number, and q is squared. So part A becomes a difference of two squares. So you have a P in front of each bracket and you have two Q at the outside of each bracket because the square root of four is two. And then you do one with a plus and one with a minus. Part B, you'll notice that that top line is exactly what I just did in part A. So I'm going to rewrite the top line as the difference of two squares. Oh, I've missed a wee P out there, sorry. And then P minus two Q. So P plus two Q, P minus two Q all over. Then because you've already factorised the top line, you always have to check, does the bottom factorise? The plan here is to get something to cancel down. So yeah, the bottom line has a common factor of 3. So if you take out 3, that leaves you with P plus 2Q. Those two brackets will cancel out. And that leaves you with P minus 2Q on the top, all over 3 on the bottom, with or without the brackets. So that is your answer to that one. Moving on. Question 7, what's the equation of the line in terms y equals mx plus c? So you need to pick any two coordinates on this line to start with. So I'm just going to show you all the ones you can choose. You can use that. All of these ones here that I'm circling are nice, clear coordinates. I'm going to use the, the y-intercept. I'm going to use 0, 5. And I'm just going to use the next one along, which is 2, 10. So my gradient is y2 minus y1. So it's going to be 10 take away 5 all over 2 take away 0, which gives me 5 over 2. So my gradient is 5 over 2. Now you can do this two different ways. If you want to use y equals mx plus c formula, the c is, vi uh, is clearly visible. Your y-intercept is 5. So your equation is y equals 5 over 2 in place of the gradient x plus 5. You could also use the other method, which is the y minus b equals mx minus a. Let's choose any of your coordinates. So let's use the let's use the 0, 5 one. So you've got y take away 5 is 5 over 2 bracket x minus 0. y take away 5 is 5 over 2x. And then if you move that 5 over, it just gives you the same answer as you got there. So it depends which method you've been shown or are more comfortable with. Personally, I get to the point where I just always use the y minus b one. Okay, so this is one of the last topics in the Nat 5 course. It is um, your trig equations. And this is a way of bringing a calculator question into non-calculator by telling you what cost, uh, cost like telling you the cost of 60 equals 0 0.5. Now, they want you to solve cos x equals negative 0 0.5. So what you would do is because cos is negative, you would tick sine and tan. You would not tick all and you would not tick cos. You would then do x equals the inverse cos of 0 0.5. But they've already told you that that gave you 60. So the acute angle that comes out is 60. And if you look at that from the picture, it's 60. But we're looking for these two answers here, the ones that fall between 90 and 270. So using the angle 60, we apply that to the sine box, which is 180 take away 60 which is 120. We then apply it to the tan box, which is 180 plus 60, which is 240. So the two answers are 120 and 240. So you just have to kind of treat this as um, a calculator question. But remember that they've told you what costs, that it costs a 60 0 0.5 to save you having to do the shift cost part in your calculator. Question nine is a lovely question. Multiply the brackets and simplify. So first step is we multiply absolutely everything by the first term. So you're going to multiply everything by x. So that gives us x cubed plus 4x squared take away x. 
Then we're going to multiply everything by minus 3. Now just watch, minus 3 will change all your signs. Now I lay it out that I line up all my x squared. So minus 3 times x squared will give me minus 3x squared. Minus 3 times positive 4 is negative 12x. And then at the end, minus times a minus turns to a plus 3. Then you just to add them up. So you've got an x cubed. You've got a plus 4 minus 3. 4 minus 3 is 1, so you've got plus 1x squared, but I don't write the 1. And then you've got minus 1 minus 12 for your x's, which is minus 13x plus 3. So just that way of laying it out, I just think, always makes it a wee bit easier to do that tidy up and you're not muddling up all your different x's with different powers. Okay, question 10 asks you to do quartiles. So it says, from the above data, find the median, the lower quartile, and upper quartile. It then asks you to draw a box plot, and then it asks you to compare your box plot to this one. Now, box plots aren't part of National 5 just now, but what we can do is we can find the quartiles as normal, and then we can compare the box plots, okay? So I'm just going to rub a wee bit of this out. Okay, so what I've done is I've written all those numbers out in order and I have got 20 numbers. So I'm going to find the middle. So 20 split into 2 is 10 and 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there is my middle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I've got 10 numbers each side. So that is my median, my Q2. If I split this other 10 in, in half, I'm going to have 5 and 5. So there's my Q1. And then splitting it again, 5 and 5 puts my Q3 in there. So my lower quartile is 1.5. My median is 3 and my upper quartile is 4. So it's good to always just label them at the side and write them down. It then asks, um, it doesn't ask the semi-interquartile range, but I'm going to find it out because that's what I'm going to be using to do the comparison bit. So the semi-interquartile range, semi means half, Interquartile range means highest quartile take away lowest. So it's Q3 minus Q1 and then half it. So that is 4 take away 1.5 and then half it, which is uh, 2.5 half, so 1.25. So that is my semi interquartile range of the first set of data, but pupils going to the cinema. It then gives us data on pupils going to the football a football match. So this one was about football and this one was about cinema. Now remember box plots aren't part of um National 5, but really this is your Q1 for your lower quartile. This is was our Q2 and this was our Q3. That's what's going on. So the semi interquartile range for the football was 7 take away 1, so Q3 minus Q1 and then half it, which was 6 over 2, which was 3. Now, a bit like standard deviation, the lower the semi-interquartile range, the less varied the numbers are. So it said compare the box plots and comment. So because the lower semi-interquartile range belongs to the cinema survey, it means the number of times they visit the survey is a lot less varied than the number of times they visit the football. And that's it put into a sentence. So the number of times students go to the football is more varied, and that's because of the higher semi interquartile range. Now the range of values, the range, the range of visits for visiting the cinema was between one and five. So it had a range of four, and the football had a range of nine to zero. So it had a range of nine. So you could also also comment on the overall range, um, so that you could then say that the the range of football times was bigger as well. So I've just written that there. The range of football trips was bigger because nine is bigger than four. I wouldn't stress too much about them because remember you will not be given the box plots, but you could be asked to compare two semi-interquartile ranges. So it's just remembering the lower the semi-interquartile range, the less spread out the numbers are, like standard deviation statements. Okay, our next question is a little bit of functions again. We are told, sorry, there's an F gone missing on here. So F of X was the trinomial and G of X was the 5X plus 3. It wants you to find the values to which F of X equals G of X. Now, most people would look at this and think, I have no idea what I'm doing. But it's just a case of putting these equal to each other. So we're going to do X squared plus 2X minus 1 is equal to 5X plus 3. So that's us putting the f function equal to the g function. Then I'm going to bring everything to one side. So that will give me 2x minus 5x minus 1 minus 3, and that all equals 0. If I tidy that up, 2 take away 5 is minus 3x minus 4. 
At that point, you have a trinomial equal to zero, so your instinct should be to factorise. It's a fancy way of putting in a quadratic equation. So factorising that, numbers that multiply to four are four and one. To make negative three, that had to be positive one, negative four. You then solve each of those equations, and that gives you um, x plus one equals zero, so x equals minus one. X minus 4 is 0, so X equals 4. So that is the values for X when the two functions are equal, as you were asked. The next question is indices. So you have to multiply and you've got the power raised. Now, Bodmas tells us to do this power raised bit first of all. If you have something raised to a power, that means you are multiplying. And a simple way of remembering that is if you had X cubed all squared, you could write that as X cubed times X cubed. 3 add 3 is 6, which is the same as 3 times 2. So that's a good way of trying to remember the rule. So either way, we're multiplying these powers. So you've got 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. So we've got y to the power 8 times y to the negative 6. Then when you're multiplying, you simply add the powers. So 8 take away 6 is 2. So the answer is just y squared for that one. Don't let it put you off. It's just remembering your rules. Okay, then we have a quadratic. So it tells us a quadratic here and it says find the coordinates of the minimum turning point. So the coordinates come from this equation. So this is a general form of your quadratic equation. Your turning point is your BC value. Now, the B is the opposite of whatever's in the bracket. Minus one means it's moved to the positive one direction. So it is a long one, and then minus 16 at the end means it goes down 16. And just have a look at the picture. It's clearly positive for the first number. So if you were tempted to put minus 1 in there, that wouldn't fit the picture. So the turning point is 1 minus 16. The axis of symmetry is this dotted line that I'm drawing down the middle here. Now that dotted line, everything along there is along 1 and then up or down something. So the equation is simply x equals 1. The equation of your axis of symmetry is always x equals b, x equals whatever you've put for the first bit of your coordinate. And if you don't put the x equals, you don't get the mark, I'm afraid, and a lot of people do that in exams. And the last question, we've got some thirds in algebraic fractions. So if we do the third first of all, we're going to simplify root 45 into two numbers. Now that is 9 times 5, so root 9, root 5. Take away 2 root 5. The square root of 9 is 3. So you've got 3 root 5, take away 2 root 5. And then you just subtract the numbers at the front. 3 take away 2 is 1. So you've got 1 root 5. But of course, we don't need to write the number 1. For part B, there are two methods here. I like the smile and the kiss method. So I'm going to show that one. So smile and kiss means you combine the bottom two for your denominator, which gives us x cubed. You do 1 times x is x. 1 times x squared is x squared, and you have that. Now, you may then notice absolutely everything has an x in it, so we can almost take out a common factor of x. So x divided by x leaves you with 1. That goes down to just an x, and then that goes down to an x squared. The alternative method here is we can just leave that first fraction exactly as it is and leave it as 1 over x squared, and then the second fraction just times top and bottom by x which leaves you with x over x squared. Now the denominators match, you just add the top row, so 1 plus x all over x squared. So that's the other method, but the main thing is to mention, if you do smile and kiss, just always check at this point here. If there's a common factor in all, you can simply remove it and it cancels down. And that is the end of the paper one. Thank you.